So I ran a poll on Instagram asking you guys whether you wanted me to break down this Euro USD trade and the majority of you guys came back and said yes you want me to drop the deets on this trade. I'm going to share a breakdown on this trade, why I got into it and everything else. This is the trade I'm talking about right now. You guys can see it on the screen right now and I do have the executions that I'm going to show at the very end of this video so stay tuned for all of that. But we can see I'm on the daily time frame. I was on Instagram live the other day talking about how I get my bias from the daily time frames at all times. Nothing changes. If I need a little bit more detail I might drop to the four hour time frame but primarily and the majority of the time probably 95% of the time I'm on that daily time frame and then what am i seeing i'm seeing price making a higher highs and higher lows higher highs and higher lows so if price is making higher highs and higher lows i'm expecting the lows to not be traded through these lows not to be trading through so i'm looking to attack the buy side liquidity according to the higher time frame so this brings me to this week so i'm going to go ahead and put some annotations on this is the week. Up here, you see relative equal highs. There's going to be people that say, oh, those aren't equal highs. They don't align up perfectly. Look, they don't have to align up perfectly. So I've got my relative equal highs here. Well, technically, it's triple highs up here. So I know there's money to the top side. There's money to the top side. So the drawn price should be to the top side. That means when this week opens up, I'm going to be looking to target this liquidity. But it doesn't mean I'm going to hold the whole thing up there. I might take partials, close, come back another day, and so on and so forth. You guys have seen my trade on EURUSD. All over Instagram, I've been posting all my trades that I've been in for EURUSD, running out the buy side liquidity. And so there's been multiple trades, but today I'm sharing on one of those setups. Now, let's bring you to today. Let's go to the one hour time frame. This is a new week. Monday takes place. Let's go ahead and separate Monday out. This is obviously going to be vitally key. This is a new week. This is Friday's price action. This is Monday's price action. So what have I seen? I've seen on Friday, they made a move higher, expansion higher. They've accumulated orders and they've made another move higher. I've mentioned this multiple times before. When it comes to accumulating orders when it comes to generating liquidity to run later it's always going to be in one of these two ways price is either going to expand higher then accumulate or go sideways consolidate and then expand again or it's going to expand higher retrace and then expand again i used to be of the mindset back in the day that when price expanded higher i expect automatic retracement all the time i always look for a retracement every single time it didn't always come and it used to baffle me it used to really get to me i was like but we were taught that price has to expand and retrace expand and retrace that's what we were taught and so i always look for that retracement and sometimes it will never come and i would never understand why it never came it's because there's two ways to generate liquidity they're either going to accumulate keep price within a range because we know the opinions get built up on both sides orders get placed on both sides accumulating orders and then they're going to expand or they're going to retrace because above every single smaller high that they produce there's going to be liquidity there once again accumulating orders to run it later so from friday we expanded higher accumulated orders and expanded after an expansion we ran above this high the price is technically within a premium at this point on this time frame and then i expect a retracement or accumulation and we go again if price is going to retrace i'm going to expect it to retrace into a certain poi first off i'm going to mark up the very lowest point here to the highest point here as long as price is within this high and above this high price is within a premium euro usd is in a premium price i want to see it drop back down into a discounted price before going again i'm going to look for points of interest within a discounted price so let's quickly go up to the four hour time frame friday monday tuesday my point of interest that i'm looking for price to turn around in is here within this four hour imbalance so i'm going to mark up my imbalance here this is my four hour imbalance from this kind of six week high to this one's low. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and expand it out to the right. And then I'm going to anticipate price dropping into this area here before catching my entry. And then what you can do as well, what I did decide to do, and I didn't have to do that, but what I decided to do was I decided to refine this area even more. So I decided to refine this area to the one hour time frame as well. So I just mark up that too. And you don't have to keep refining it. By the way, generally, is this is my four hour imbalance. I'm either going to look at it turning around near the high or 50%. So I like to generally get involved when price gets to 50% of the imbalance and go. Just to say, I'm selling your USD, I'm taking TP at the very highest point, but entries technically come from near about 50%, especially when it's a four hour imbalance. But anyway, I've refined it to the one hour imbalance. What I've also done is just to show you where 50% aligns up with is here. My one hour imbalance is right there. My first POI is within a discounted price. I'm going to look about price turning around in this 
error here. So now I'm gonna just hit play a few times. Uh, let's just go forward once. You can see we get into our error of interest over here. This is our four hour imbalance, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm in yet. So I've just zoomed in a bit more. Go ahead and play one kind of at a time. There we go, look at that. We dig straight into now my one hour imbalance. This is exactly where you're looking for a reversal sign. Once you've gained enough experience and you become a lot more confident, you are able to catch price as it is dropping. And you, you might not necessarily need to wait for the reversal because my confirmation is that it dropped into this area. It's within a discounted price and price is bullish. I don't have to wait for the reversal sign, but if you want to, and if you want the extra confirmation, then wait for that reversal sign. I'm gonna go to the one minute time frame to show you guys what I'm looking at. The reason I'm going to the one minute time frame is this, and I, I've said it so many different times. This is the reason I go to the one minute time frame. That's my entry time frame. I don't know what your entry time frame is. It could be in five minutes, it could be 15 minutes. It's not for me. The higher the time frame, the, the bigger the stop loss. And so I go to the one minute time frame to get my entries. Now we're on a one minute time frame. Price doesn't always have to just push off from your POI. It could run through it. Price hasn't done anything yet. When price got here, we had relative equal lows, so you can't trust this push up higher. You always expect the relative equal lows to get taken out first. And if it misses you, it misses you. You catch the trade higher up. It got taken out here, but it just came shy of our one hour time frame imbalance. And so once again, you're gonna be waiting patiently. Here, when it dropped into this one hour imbalance, did it take out the high? No, price isn't ready yet. And then we keep going. It cleans up the full one hour imbalance here. Did it take out the high? Price isn't ready yet. But then it drops past my one hour imbalance. Don't forget, this is my entry area. I believe I jump in here somewhere because I'm anticipating this one being taken out. This one right here. We've passed our one hour imbalance now. I'm expecting this 50% level to hold. So let's just quickly go and mark up 50%. I really want you guys to remember this. Look at this here. Where's my 50% level? Here. Look at where 50% of that imbalance was here price ran through it it ran through this level here when price does it don't give up on the buy don't think it's gone this happens sometimes in my scenario because i'm a lot more confident i've seen these things happen a number of times i'm a lot more confident to catch price when it's dropping this is still dropping if you need the extra confirmation if you're that person that says i want to see that reversal sign and normally if i get taken out with the drop then I wait for the reversal sign. But if you're that person who wants to wait for that reversal sign, then this is it here. This is my down close candle. And this is another question I get asked quite often as well is how do you mark up a down close candle? I don't know about other people, but this is how I mark it up. You see this high and this low? I run it from the very highest point to the lowest point. This is a high right here and this is my low. The highest point of my up close candle, this is the lowest point. And so when price trades through that high, so let's change the color so you guys can see it. Last down close candle. I take it from where they started dropping from. They started dropping from here. They stopped dropping here. So when price traded through the high, this is when this down close candle was formed. It's not formed yet when it's still beneath this high. This is when it was formed, when it traded through the high of this high here with this candlestick. When it comes back into the candlestick, this is where you can potentially catch your entry. And you can play it two ways. You can play it from the highest point, catch an entry in about the high, stop loss at the low, or you can catch it in there 50%. It doesn't always come back here, but just so you know, you can catch it at 50% too. So let's go ahead and mark that up. Price comes into our down close candle, and then let's see what happens next. Hit player, we're gonna zoom out a little bit. You can see it spends a little bit of time here, and then it eventually starts pushing up higher. And so it starts pushing up higher and then my TP level now. So where I'm looking to target. So let's go back up the time frame. Let's go to, we can go to the one hour time frame. It doesn't matter. So you guys are fully aware with these relative equal highs. But just because that's my overall target, just because this is my overall target doesn't mean that I'm going to hold this whole position up here. I'm going to take partials along the way and then let the rest ride. Or I'm gonna close it when price gets to a level I am satisfied with and then come back the next day and then go again. This is our high. Let's just see how many pips away that is. Oh, let's go back to, down to the one minute time frame actually. So my entry level came from, I believe, this kind of stick. My stop loss was at this low. We're looking at just about a three pip stop loss. And now when it comes to targets, like I was saying, let's look about how many pips this would have been. And I know we're looking at, you know, percentages, but I wanted to show you what the number of pips were for stop losses. I know there's gonna be people in the comments saying, oh, I can't believe you got a free pip stop loss look it doesn't always happen just letting you guys know but that was a free pip stop loss that's what price gave us and so that's what we're using i'm not going to give it some more room for no reason if it takes me out here then i'm anticipating this whole imbalance being filled and then i'm going to look about the next best opportunity to enter and so my tp level was right here to the very high why because if this is our low high high low higher high high low i'm expecting price to make a new high 
47 pips. So altogether then, I believe I entered somewhere in this candlestick. We had a three pip stop loss, or roughly about a three pip stop loss. And then my TP levels, let's go ahead and put it all in the screen. And this is my level for taking partials. You can see, look at that, that's a one to 16 and a half. This is my level of taking TP right above this high. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep it on this time frame, 50 minute time frame, show you guys how it panned out. Let's go. Once again, like I always talk about, you see it come back to entry right here. This is why you don't move your stop loss early. You're patient, you're waiting, you're chilling. Um, I'm trying to just expand this to the right. It's not allowing <laughs> me. There we go. Right here is where I take TP. Let's go ahead and pause this real quick. This is where the, the trade got closed off, right here at this high. Why? Because I'm going to offload my buys with someone else who's willing to take the buy higher. And so you're going to be asking yourself, where on earth are people willing to take my buy and take it higher? is above my height because people do breakout trades. They're looking to buy up here, but this is where I'm gonna be taking my trade, taking my sell off, and then waiting for the next best opportunity. Let's just quickly cancel out all of this now. It's gone above and beyond. So you guys know I've been holding those EURUSD trades. Um, I've been placing multiple trades, but you can see, look at that, it's gone above and beyond. Let's just go to the four hour time frame. Those were the relative equal highs we wanted. 1.1094, I even spoke about it on my Instagram threads. So if you guys aren't following me on threads, go ahead and follow me. Still trying to figure out that platform. I also mentioned yesterday where my final destination for EU is right up here. And so when price go ahead, this way I took partials on other trades. So now guys, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and put on my execution so you guys can see this for yourself. I must have backed out the screen and basically everything refreshed went to another chart. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys still the same executions. So I'm just gonna have to go mark up again so you guys can see it. So this was my one hour imbalance. My one hour imbalance was in here. And I'm just gonna leave it like this because basically everything got wiped off my chart just now. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and do it. I'm gonna go to the one minute time frame and just go back to exactly that same point over here. Now I'm gonna put my executions on. There we go. You can see this is where I entered, like I said. Um, it was around this candlestick, oh, right in here, right in here. And then I took my TP at the very highest point. So let's go ahead and mark this up so we can see it as we're going along. Right in here, there we go. When I zoom in, so that's that highest point right here. You can see I took it right when price got to this level here, 